Okay, we're back here today at the Grande Pacific Model Railroad. We're going to have a little short video here about uh, block detection. This would be play into uh, anything that you would do into uh, a CTC or any type of signaling system where you're going back to a command station and then into some type of program and most of us use JMRI to tell it to drive the switches and use the logic. Uh, I've kind of done this, some of the steps here. This was, again, some of you haven't been keeping up to this. This is the uh, tracks to the new Atex, uh, Apex Latex company. This was uh, an add-on project, so the main line had to be cut. The switch had to be put in. The block ran from right on the other side of that tunnel, and it went all the way on around over to just before the switch and it had a name in this case it was a uh, falling rock uh, now because we put the switch in the middle the uh, signaling would change uh, and when and if I get around to uh, putting a signal system on the layout the other factor that comes into play is uh, I do set my switches on the block detection on the panel to uh, disabled as oc if occupied. Uh, then you can't have one thrown by mistake. You can't throw one from the dispatcher's panel by mistake. If this block here that the switch is going to be in is occupied, uh, the system will not allow this uh, decoder to throw. And this is 290. Okay, so this is switch 290. It's already been set up. There's a whole video on us doing this. So I thought I'd just bring it up. Now, gapping. Okay, that's a finished gap other than it's not been painted. Uh, cut the gap with the Dremel tool. And there is one that is cut. And it doesn't have the plastic. Once I've cut it with the Dremel tool, and I have it so the plastic fits in there nice and snugly. Snug, excuse me, not snugly. Okay, whatever. This is a picture of one that's been cut, and it has a piece of styrene in it. Doesn't make too much difference. Try to get it, you know, you don't want to do a cut a lot of more cutting than you have to. So it just, the width of the styrene makes a difference because you're going to cut it down. Now. Super glue it in. Um, take your super glue like this, put it on each side of the styrene, shove it in a hole, and then hit it with the instant set kicker. So, uh, by the way, you can buy that in a gallon size at Lowe's. Um, but it just sets it up real quick and then you can come back and work on it. You cut it off an X-Acto knife, shape the edges on each side of the track so you don't have any excess, and then you have your gap set. So between the two points right there and the stick sticking up and the one I haven't put in, that will become a block. Now that block will be CP290 Apex Latex. That's the block name. That also gets to be important when you're fooling with JMRI. Names get to be real important. They have to be exact. Uh, you'll find that out when you try to go set up all the panels. But the black wire is going to be the feed because I do it on the the uh, common side on oh, with the black wire and that will go down underneath and it will be hooked up to and wrapped around. It'll be hooked to the track bus. But before it gets tracked to the, hooked to the track bus, we'll make four passes around this. And the four passes are the maximum sensitivity on a BD-20. Then the BD-20 will be hooked up by the first two connections right there to the AIU-01. I have two terminals just happen to have two left over on one close by. Then I will go into the computer and I will open up layout editor and panel pro. I'll go to the turnout to the sensor tables and I've already done this. 
I w these two sensors would not have been in there. It happens to be 8, 12, uh, 8, 12 and 8, 13. So I've added these in, given them the names. Then I have to go do the rebuild on the panel with uh, attaching them to the blocks. Uh, so this is just the steps you got to go through. And I have to run a feeder back there because now I've cut the feed to the siding so I have to put a feeder on that and I have to put a feeder on this block and I have to hook up that BD20 on this section right here because it now becomes a separate block so we've had to add two blocks in and do some wiring and cutting but this is what it takes to keep these things separate this way that switch in the computer on the layout editor is a separate device it's a separate location and when the uh, cars which all have all of my cars and I'll take one and turn it over so you can see it have well, let me see now no it's on the front wheel it's on the wrong wheel have 5,000 resistors on them right there now I use the conductivity pin um, cut the little rubber insulation off the side of these most of these are intermountain wheels that come with a little rubber insulation on one side just make it flat with a cut it off with exacto knife scrape the wheel make sure there's no uh, lacquer on it, scrape with it uh, right in the area where that uh, resistor is going and then scrape the axle a little bit to make sure it may, there's good conductivity on the thing and then you put a little drop of super glue, glue the resistor on, let it dry then come back and put your conductivity paint on, let it dry and then take a ohm meter and make sure you're getting 5000 ohm resistance Across that wheel. That works for my NCE system, I will say that. We use a CMRI and a different uh, detector device at the club I belong to, and 11,000 resistors work. Uh, their, their thing is a little more sensitive, but believe me, 5 or 11,000 is not going to affect you. Just, and there's one. on both ends. There's one on that end and then the one up on this end. So I put resistors on both ends of the car. That way if a car is hanging over into a switch block uh, or wherever they are they're going to set off the detector and it'll show up on the panel and that'll also automatically stop the switch from being thrown. I hope that helps a little bit in understanding some of you need to go to. Uh, <laughs> I will only go in here for detection purposes. When you go in and set up panel editor, I want to just point out something about a crossover. <laughs> when I first did this, I had this crossover and this ladder down here all tied together as one block. So if you were in that area, they all lit up, including the main. Right into it, as always, you know, you live and learn. I figured, I found out that actually there's four points in layout editor that I could have detected in a switch in a crossover. This would have been one. This would have this side would have been two this would have been three and then over here would have been four uh, didn't see a need for that but I did go back right there and cut the, the solder joint and insulated this so that now the switch on this side is a block and the switch over here on this side is a block those down there are a separate block but this allows somebody to be working the mines and so forth back here with the drill track 
and you can still have trains pass on the main and it doesn't lock up the switches uh, it just a it's just another feature and believe me there's so many details and a bit possibilities in layout editor and all of the other parts of JMRI that there's just endless possibilities about uh, setting up blocks and getting the correct readings you need to run your signaling system or detection hope this helps see you later bye